All right. Thanks a lot. You know, some people have a favorite movie. Some people have a favorite band or a favorite television show. I have a favorite function, and it's called lag. Um, I'm Kathy Kellenberger. I work for Redgate Software, and I'm also a volunteer instructor at Launch Code in St. Louis that's helped getting people into tech career careers and lifting people out of poverty, and it's just a wonderful thing that I do. The most important thing to know about me is that I'm a lifelong learner and teacher. So several years ago, um, a couple of people from different directions actually came and asked me how to compare stock prices from, you know, from the stock market um, from one day to the next. And this is kind of what the data looks like. Um, you have a ticker symbol, all my data is made up. You have a date. You have a closed price, and um, so this is the original data, the first three columns. If I look at the second row here, how do I pull that previous day's closed price forward so I can calculate the difference? So let me go ahead and show you how that's done. And it was just kind of funny that two different people asked me how to do the same thing within a couple of months. So I have this fake data here that I've made up, but I just want to show you a little sample of it. Um, I have, uh, there's also an open price, but the open price doesn't always uh, correspond to the previous day's close price. Like something could happen at night to change that. So what I want to do is, for example, in this case, take this number and subtract this number. So I can easily do that with the lag function. And I'll explain a little bit more about how it works in just a minute. So the very first day, I don't, I can't go back. So I can't, uh, I have a, a null returned. But if I look at the second day, you can see that I've pulled that value forward. Okay, so in each row. And then when I get to the next ticker symbol, um, Again, I'm at the beginning of this partition. I don't cross different ticker symbols. Let's go back to the slides and see a little bit more about this. What, what in the world is this function called lag? Because most of the time, you're gonna have to join the table to itself, and I didn't have to do that. So lag and lead, so there's another function called lead that's a companion function. Uh, they're both window or windowing functions that are new with 2012. And it seems funny to say new, but because that's 10 years ago. But a lot of folks still haven't heard of these functions. Whenever I've presented uh, windowing functions at different events, there's usually several people that have never heard of this. So lag will let you grab a column from a previous row. Lead will let you grab a column from a later row. Here's the syntax. You start with the word lag. You give it some kind of an expression, typically a column. There's a couple of optional parameters that I'll talk about in a minute. The really important thing to notice is this over clause, and you'll always see an over clause with a window function. You have an optional partition by and that's how I was able to separate those different ticker symbols so they, we didn't compare two different ones together. So I've, that's how you separate the data. And then you have to also provide an order by so that SQL Server knows how to line the rows up. So that way you can figure out which one is a previous row, which one is the next row. And as I said, lag goes back, lead goes forward. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Let's take a look at this one here. I have some customer orders from AdventureWorks. And what if I wanted to find the difference between the days for particular customers? So you can see that I was able to grab the previous order date and do a calculation on it with date diff. So that's the previous order 
and then I repeated the formula again right in here and did a date diff to calculate the days between. Uh, later, I wanted to find out what was the average day between their orders. That was a little bit more complex because I could not nest window functions and I wanted to do an average over. So I wanted to do an average over this answer here. So I had to uh, put the original query in a common table expression. That's one option. There's quite a few others. And in the outer query, I can calculate that average. So here I'm using two window functions to come up with the answer. I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, different options. So here is lead. I mentioned that there are two functions. And previously, when we looked at lag, there was a null at the beginning of the partition. Now I have a null at the end. So what's happening here is on the very first row, it's grabbing this value and pulling it back. Okay. And so when it gets to the end, of the partition, there's nothing left to grab. Well, that's lead. Um, you could also accomplish the same thing, uh, I believe, if you had used lag here and order by and made that descending. Um, but, you know, there are the two functions. So, uh, one thing that you might want to do is eliminate the nulls. Now, if you want the rows to still show up, but you don't want that null to be there, you can use this default option, default parameter, and what that'll do is every time it sees a null, it will just change that to zero. If you want to completely eliminate the row, what you'd have to do is take your original query and put separate the logic in a common table expression, temp table, whatever your favorite method is, and then in the outer query, you could filter. You cannot filter directly on a window function. They can only appear in the select list or in the order by. I also wanted to show you offset. Of course, the first thing I did when I started learning about lag is I tried to put a negative number here. So this offset is the number of rows to go back when we're using lag. Um, by default, it's one. So here, I have to go all the way to row three and go. it goes back to this close price right here, way back in row one. So I've gone back two. Uh, of course, I tried to use a negative number here. It didn't work. It has to be positive numbers. I like breaking things. That's how you learn, right? All right, so you may be wondering, you know, lag and lead, they look pretty easy to use. But how's the performance? Well, the performance is amazing. So I don't have really a lot of time to uh, do a bunch of comparisons live, but I can tell you that I have done it. I don't expect you to be able to read all these, but this is uh, the query, a query, uh, production product in sales order detail from AdventureWorks, two relatively small tables and I wanted to find out the difference between the order date, similar to how I did in customers in the demo. And I found a bunch of different ways to come up with the same results. I had really not realized there would be so many different ways. So in the, uh, I, I looked at an inline table function. I looked at self join. And actually, I believe this one wouldn't even run. I had to do a left join to get it to work for some reason. And um, I tried outer apply. I had really big hopes for outer apply. Again, the performance wasn't that great. So here are the different um, options that I looked at. Lag always came out, always always the winner. Uh, here's the outer apply with just the same table. It came in, in at 12 seconds, but then I decided to use a temp table. So then that did speed up outer apply to almost as fast as the lag. And if you can see it at the bottom, 
can just pull that up. That's the link to this article if you're interested. So if you want to grab the slides in code, you can get that from my GitHub account. And also, if you're interested in learning more about all the windowing functions, take a look at my book, Expert T-SQL Window Functions in SQL Server 2019. So that's all I have for today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the sessions. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak today.